Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Reese Parton and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. So I did trailer reactions to Doctor Who but I haven't really done many videos about Doctor Who and this time around I thought I might do a Doctor Who review. Before I get started by the way, um, I don't really like the animosity within the Doctor Who fandom right now or the Star Wars fandom or any major fandoms really. So if you're going to leave comments and you're going to leave criticism of the episodes of me and my opinions, do so in a more friendly manner than has often been done uh, online. It's getting a bit rude. It's getting a bit too much. And if they are rude, I will delete them. If they're constructive, if you talk about how and this is something I think about this whole era, the Chris Chibnall era, the pace of every episode has gone down. It's really slowed down and sometimes not in a really good deliberate way. Sometimes you have a slow episode, but it's slow because it's meaningful and it's impactful and it's deliberately taking its time. These ones for me have kind of just felt slow in general. There's not as much going on, so it doesn't drive the story forward. That's a constructive criticism. Saying Chris Chibnall is dumb and should be fired not so much. So just choose your words carefully if you're going to leave comments, but please do actually. I really would like some comments and some feedback. I do like to hear what people think. It is a common reaction that these past, uh, this last season and then the first quarter-ish, I think we're about a quarter of the way through, nearly half the way through actually. Next episode is exactly halfway through this season, but anyway, last season, season 11 and this season 12, the general opinion has been quite low for it. And I'll be honest, uh, Stephen Moffat's era of Doctor Who is my favourite. He gave us my two favourite Doctors. Well, two of my favourite Doctors. He gave me two of my favourite companions. I just think he's got a different grip on Doctor Who and it's a grip that I associate with more. I don't want to say better because there are things that Chibnall does that are stronger than what Moffat does. But I think I'll get into that soon. But uh, I reckon I should jump into it and actually start talking about the episodes. So, Spyfall Parts 1 and 2. By the way, full-blown spoilers here, and there were actually some big reveals in those episodes, which I was really happy about. But if you haven't seen them, please go watch them, then watch this review, and plenty of other reviews out there. There are lots of great review channels, lots of great review podcasts. There are even people on Twitter who review it really well, so just go and watch it, and then dive into the fandom. But I did just want to warn you, because I am going to talk about the big reveals, such as Sasha Dwan as the Master. <laughs> That was a nice surprise. The thing about Doctor Who, and it's kind of been a problem with every season, basically, except for the ones where Moffat split the seasons, but I'm not a big fan of split seasons for 13 episodes. It makes sense for things like uh, the shows on the CW or the superhero shows, the Arrowverse, where they've got 22 episodes or something like that a season. So when you split it, you get the equivalent of a Doctor Who length season, full season. But when you split a Doctor Who one, you only get five or six episodes in each half. That's really annoying. But the formula for Doctor Who has been first few episodes, introduce a new Doctor, new companions, or get you back into the feel of things. Then you introduce the season arc by referencing something or showing something on screen. You don't hear too much about it until the finale, where all these questions get answered, or a few answered and then a few you're reminded of going into the next season if you're watching the Moffat era. And people found that annoying, but I kind of liked it. They carried on. But anyway, that's a completely different era. Whereas this just smack hit you with a surprise and it was really really good uh you didn't ask you weren't wondering so who is this guy who could put like you were with missy for example you didn't know who she was and then it was revealed that she's the same character but out of the blue it's revealed look at that the master's here i really liked that but as for the story of these two episodes as a whole the first episode for me kind of worked i had fun watching it but i just there was something about the villains, and I'm trying to remember their name, begins with a C or a K, that sort of sound, Catharsin or something like that. Maybe do research next time. No, I didn't find them that engaging. I don't know why. They looked good. They were The direction was pretty good for them. Um, they were pretty spooky and all that. And uh, I liked it at the beginning, but when, when it came to the bit in uh, South Africa, sorry, in Australia, it's meant to be in Australia, but it's filmed in South Africa, it kind of lost me kind of not not let me down it just it got really slow I wasn't that interested and that really kind of colored my opinion of the episode until we got that reveal and that surprise at the end which sped it up a little bit and raised my not expectations my opinion of it so the first episode a little bit touch and go I'm also not much of a fan of the characters having to justify why they disappear all the time because it's a time machine just land five minutes after they left and i know the tardis is unreliable but just try it 10 times until you get a reasonable time i don't like that they have to keep covering for themselves 
And that happens depending on who's writing for the show, I know, but I just don't like it when that happens. You use the time machine as a time machine. And if it's unreliable, then just say, okay, well, it took 15 attempts or whatever it was. But episode two was much better. One of the best things Chris Chibnall's written for the show. Uh, it had more going on. It had different time zones. It had some guest characters from the past. It had the Doctor using her wits and uh, thinking on her feet, which you don't always get with this Doctor, with the 13th Doctor, and I like that she was used uh, to that extent. And I like that she's quirky. Throughout all of these episodes, she's allowed to be quirky again. There was something about last season. I read a tweet. I'm sorry that I can't remember who it was, but if you watched this, it was really good. And if it was you, leave a comment down below and just tell everyone, hey, that was me. But there was a really great t tweet that said last year, or last season even, because last year we only had one episode. Um, but last season, the Doctor kept saying, oh, I'm funny like that. I'm quirky like that. We never really got to see it. It was all tell, not show. Now it's show, not tell. And so she's acting quirky and acting very Doctor-like now, which I really like. And she's really starting to find her feet, which I agree with criticisms that the writing for the Doctor hasn't been great. I personally think Jodie Whittaker has been very good but the writing for her has just been very generic Doctor, which is a good and bad thing. You kind of need that for the first season. It, it certainly stops comparisons because there were comparisons when Matt Smith came along saying that it felt like it was still being written for David Tennant. I don't necessarily see that in that specific case, but writing the generic Doctor avoids that comparison. So I see why they did it. But yeah, part two, for me, much better than part one. And it did make the whole story a bit more enjoyable because you saw the, you ultimately saw both halves of the story. You saw the whole thing. And it held together a bit more. And number one was uh, really good. I do have a few problems like uh, killing Stephen Fry's character way too early. I thought Lenny Henry was really good and his character had a lot of potential, but he was kind of pushed aside to the sidelines. Although it was better than some cases because the master had obviously manipulated him as opposed to, as, as opposed to them just forgetting him. I struggled to say that, <laughs> but there are cases where they just forget the villain and don't do much with it. But at least it was explained that he wasn't the linchpin. He wasn't the boss of the whole situation. So it's kind of okay to let him go to the sideline. Although it looks like he might return because uh, he did escape. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's part of the finale in some way, which would be interesting. Oh yes, the big thing at the end. I'm not a fan of Gallifrey supposedly being destroyed again. For me, it was fun in season one and two and three and four in the RTD era <laughs> when it gave the show more drama than it used to have. Um, that's not a criticism on the classic series and the classic series or the older series certainly does have drama, certainly does have emotions, but it doesn't do it in the same way as in the new series. And some people will say, good, that's a good thing. This new series has got emos in it and mopey, 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 whatever. But the state of TV has changed and you need a lot more emotional investment. And that mystery of what happened to Gallifrey and the emotional effect it had on the ninth and 10th Doctors specifically was very powerful, very well acted, very good. But we'd moved on from that. And I felt so, part of the reason why I adore the 50th anniversary, I really love the day of the Doctor, is that it felt good. There was a feel good feeling to it. The Doctor wasn't depressed all the time. <laughs> And so I do prefer it being around, even just in the background, kind of like it was in the classic series. They didn't go there all the time, but they could. I liked that New Who had got itself to that point again. Anyway, that can't be helped. It's happening. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but maybe it'll be reset or changed or something like that in the finale. Um, we'll find out, or the final few episodes, however it plays out. But I reckon it's, it's a storyline that will come back and it might be dealt with. It might be reversed. Who knows? I just think it's a step backwards in like we've seen that before sort of thing it also feels like an, an excuse for Chris Chibnall to write for an era of the show where he feels the most comfortable because he wrote a lot for RTD's time that's where most of these scripts came from I think or at least half okay so I was going to do one video about all of these episodes but I think I might actually cut this one here and then release two more about the other two so I won't look too different and I'll probably upload them about the same day ish or within a few days of each other but uh, stick around here to see my reviews of Orphan 55, episode three, and then episode four, which is Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment, hit subscribe, leave your thoughts about what you think, and uh, stick around for the next ones, because I know episode three was a bit of a, a bit of a flop, sadly. But anyway, I'm going to move on to that one now for me in the next video for you. See you guys.